Hello, good evening. Welcome to the 11th annual Wild Side and our first ever and maybe only ever live stream of Wild Side. Hopefully next year we'll all be back together to do this live. My name is Ben Cunningham. I'm a staff attorney for the South Carolina Environmental Law Project. And uh, also, more importantly for tonight, I am your host for this wonderful live stream. Here we are at the beautiful Kaminsky House grounds and uh, we're just gonna have a great time. We're very excited and honored that you're taking some time out of your Saturday night to spend with us. And we've got a lot going on this, uh, this evening. Uh, one thing I do want to let you guys know about is this is our first live stream. And so uh, maybe you guys are old hands at this, but it's our first. And so uh, unfortunately there may be, I'm sure there won't be, but there is a slight possibility there could be some technical issues along the way. Uh, so I just ask that you bear with us and be patient and everything's going to work out eventually. I'm sure of that. So, and Right now, uh, I'd like to ask you to look at our web page. It's www.scelp or scelp.org backslash wildside. And that's where you will be able to find all kinds of good stuff. Um, one of the things you can find is uh, information about our amazing silent auction. You can find information about our cartoon caption test. And a bit, I'm going to talk about both of those in just a moment. Um, but before we get to tonight's program, I'd like a, a little bit, uh, a little bit of information about Skelf and Wildside. Now, the South Carolina Environmental Law Project was started 33 years ago, and uh, hence we're celebrating 33rd birthday this year. It's a public interest law firm, and it is devoted to protecting South Carolina's natural environment. We provide legal advice and representation for all who seek to protect natural resources or to preserve the environment from threats, uh, be they government, private, whatever. Uh, that's our mission. Uh, as these challenging times remind us each and every day, uh, environmental quality and natural resource protection are vital to community health and welfare. And I don't know about you all, but I found that in these times that being inside uh, has really been trying and being outside is one way to get out and really kind of find some sense of uh, renewal. And when there's environmental destruction and degradation going on and the threats to public resources and affected communities sometimes just can't muster the resources to fight that. And that's where we come in at Skelf. And as our mission is critical now as it ever has been, and I want to read our mission statement now to you. And that mission is to protect the natural environment of South Carolina by providing legal services and advice to environmental organizations and concerned citizens by improving the state system of environmental regulation. Now, SCELP was founded in 1987 by Jimmy Chandler, Georgetown native. And at that time, you know, Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy was a devoted crusader. Uh, for decades of protecting South Carolina's environment. Wildside was first started 11 years ago to honor his memory. Jimmy passed away August 7th, 2010. And after that time, his friends and associates and colleagues decided to get together to celebrate his life and his many accomplishments. And that's what started Wildside. And that's what we've been doing ever since, is celebrating both Jimmy's legacy and also coming together to celebrate more recent uh, victories and and really just a fellowship with one another. And that's what we're doing today. The gathering then was joyous just as it is now and we're going to continue celebrating the legacy of the project. It's going to, I'd say, take its place along other great projects, the Manhattan Project, Alan Parsons Project, I would say Project Runway. I think we're in that level now, 
being a truly celebrated and worthwhile endeavor. And certainly, unlike those projects, we've done a lot more for preserving South Carolina's environment. So, so this is our second year at the Kaminsky House. Um, you will be seeing, I think, um, in a few minutes, just some of the lovely grounds. And some of you may have been with us last year at this lovely venue to enjoy it. It's a beautiful night here. Sorry you couldn't be with us. Uh, believe it or not, planning this event in the midst of a pandemic was a little bit challenging, but uh, it's come together now wonderfully well. And we are grateful for you all that even if you couldn't be here in person, that you're with us virtually. And I hope you enjoy this presentation. Uh, soon you're gonna hear uh, remarks by Amy Armstrong, our executive director. But before that, I want to share Amy's welcome message with you all. I'm going to read it to our guest right now. Welcome to Wildside. I welcome you to the 11th annual Wildside with great pleasure and gratitude. Each year, hundreds of our friends, family, and guests come together to support Scalp's work to protect South Carolina's natural environment. We kicked off the year with two significant victories. We won a ruling in the South Carolina Court of Appeals over a surreptitious attempt to open a coal ash landfill in Pickens County. Another victory followed when the South Carolina Supreme Court affirmed citizens' rights to protect themselves from environmental harm. Our efforts to protect the state's waters, wildlife, and communities continues to expand across the state, and our team is bigger and stronger than ever. But no doubt exists that the COVID-19 pandemic that impacted us all as, felt, as affected Scalp's day-to-day -day operations. At the beginning of the outbreak, our court cases and public hearings were postponed, and the crucial person-to-person -person collaboration with the attorneys, staff, board members, and partners moved almost entirely online. Meanwhile, state agencies have pushed ahead and with authorizing destructive projects, and our federal government has continued its systematic rollback of environmental safeguards. And yet, under the weight and strain of these unprecedented times, we wake up every morning, we go to work, and we keep fighting for the world we want to see. The global pandemic has emphasized the importance of clean air, clean water, and the value of South Carolina's rich biodiversity, which sustains our lives in so many ways. Every year has its defining moments, but these last 10 months have been life altering for us all. Still, 2020 remains a critical year for our environment and we have a lot of work ahead of us. We must act together to preserve and safeguard South Carolina's wild side and your support and presence here today allows your lawyers for the wild side to do so. Gratefully, Amy Armstrong. All right, so you're gonna hear some more remarks from Amy in a moment, but let's move on to outline what else is going on with the li live stream program. Uh, in a few minutes, our guest speaker, uh, you may know him, uh, will be sharing his views and, on WIT, on the environmental predicament of our state. He'll be followed by Amy Armstrong, our executive director here. And when she is out, she's finished talking, we're going to turn it over to, who was here last year, Ben Prestige, is take it away with his unique blend of American blues, roots music, and Americana. And, uh, I'll be back later on for a few reminders and to say goodbye to the live stream audience. I'm sorry if you guys aren't here because we've already enjoyed a lot of Ben Prestige's wonderful music already. Now, last but not least, let me share a few details about the live auction and cartoon contest. Our fame live auction, as you may know, has gone online this year. Bidding started last Saturday for 49 fantastic items, beach houses, mountain cabins, art, art, art. And we have already received hundreds of bids, but everything is still up for grabs. And bidding will close tonight starting at 8.30. Online bidding means that everybody everywhere with an internet connection can bid. Uh, even if you just have a phone, you can bid. Click the auction registration link in the chat box, which you'll see below, and follow the instructions. By the way, you can check out which items have uh, been registered before. You can see that maybe there are a few items that haven't yet been bid on, so you can get them at a really good price, I suspect. And even that those that have been on, been bid on, I think there's still some really good deals out there. If you're looking for more details about how it all works, including shipping and handling, 
If you end up winning one of these items, please look at the uh, option rules link in the chat box and it'll explain everything. If you have any questions, please just chat at us and we'll do our best to get to those questions. As to the cartoon contest, uh, Robert Ariel shared with us a captionless version of one of his many illustrations that had to do with offshore drilling and seismic testing. And we have asked our supporters to offer their funniest captions for this cartoon. And uh, we're very excited about that. Robert has selected four finalists that you should now be seeing on your screen. Uh, we were gonna initially have three, kind of like the New Yorker, but there were just too many submissions. So we wanted to do four instead. So you've got more choices. Tonight, you must be involved in picking a winner. You can vote online or via text the same way you can uh, vote in our silent auction. Uh, you can, the, I believe there's a link in the chat box. Of course, Wildside is a fundraiser, not a representative democracy, so you can vote more than once. Um, unlike some people who may have recently suggested that voting multiple times is a good idea, I can assure you uh, and everyone here that voting multiple times will not result in you committing a felony. It's really simple. Uh, you One vote is one dollar, so please vote as often as you choose. Um, it's a great way to be very generous and we're, your generosity is appreciated. And it's also nice to have one sense of humor validated with a winning caption, so it's a win-win. Feel free to ask uh, any questions about that or anything else uh, during the live stream using the chat box and we'll do our best to answer as we go. Now, none of this would be possible without our wonderful sponsors and I wanna recognize a few of them right now. Thank you to Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina, Biohabitats, First Citizens Bank, Hilliard Law Firm, Hopkins Law Firm, Lucy Law Firm, the Law Office of Daniel Hunnicutt, Nelson Mullins, who has been sponsoring this for the past 11 years, Polly Coffin Associates, Research Planning Inc., Senior Golfers of America, Waccamaw Law, and White's Law Firm. Okay, that's everything for my introduction. Thank you again. Thank you so much for tuning in and spending time with us. We're about to get even better when we hear from Mr. Ariel and Amy, and also Ben Prestige, and I'll see you later on tonight. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us here this evening. Um, whether you're with us here in person or you're with us virtually, um, we're really glad to have you with us. Uh, this year's Wild Side looks and feels a lot different, uh, but still we're inspired by you being here, um, joining with us together to support the work that we do to protect the state's natural environment. I am truly honored to introduce our guest who really doesn't really need any introduction. Um, Robert Ariel for decades has been a syndicated uh, column, uh, editorial cartoonist. Um, he has won numerous international, national, and state awards for his editorial cartoons. He's a three-time Pulitzer Prize finalist. Um, and I have always admired Robert's work. He, uh, he's able to tell stories that are facing our, our state and our nation in a poignant and compelling way that's just very powerful. And it wasn't until I was reading one of our, our local newspaper, The Coastal Observer, had a full page ad, or full page just dedicated to Robert's work. And it was when I saw that full page ad that it just really struck me how Robert can tell the stories of the environmental issues facing our state just in a very powerful way. So something where that us lawyers may take many, many days of trial, many, many pages of to try and persuade a court and tell them the story, Robert can definitely tell the same story with an image. So when they say that a picture is worth a thousand words, I think the same could be said of Robert's work. Um, and also, it's hilarious. 
So I am really honored and excited to have Robert as our guest, and I welcome him to the stage. Thank you, Amy, so much. That was very nice. It's really my honor to be here tonight and share some of my cartoons with you. On my cartoons, I go by my last name, Ariel. But if you've read the letters to the editor over the years, you know I go by a few other names as well. And that's how it should be. Editorial pages and editorial cartoons are forums for ideas and opinions that sometimes clash with those of the reader. Editorials and cartoons should inform readers of important issues of the day and hopefully provoke thought and discussion. That's really the role of editorial pages. But cartoons are different. They evoke a more visceral, primal reaction because instead of words, they use imagery and symbols to make the point. Ideally, editorial cartoons should champion the downtrodden and puncture the inflated egos of fat cats and politicos, or to paraphrase H.L. Mencken, editorial cartoons should comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. <laughs> now you might think that national politics are the bread and butter of editorial cartoonists, and you'd be right, they are. I could just draw Trump cartoons all day, like this one, Tomb of the Unknown Sucker. Or this one, Trump's diminishing credibility from all of his tweets. Here's someone else that's not happy with those tweets. But there are so many other subjects out there other than Trump, including many on environmental issues like this one on global warming. Here the world is in the eye of the storm of rising temperatures, rising sea levels, extreme hurricanes, and droughts and wildfires. Here's one on GMOs. I told him to lay off the genetically modified salmon. <laughs> or this one on the UN report stating man was responsible for all the mass extinctions. He's the scary one. <laughs> Speaking of the apocalypse, check out famine's new ride. You know, this idea of making a fuel ethanol from a major world food source is a recipe for a future disaster, I think. And who can forget $4 a gallon gas and all the inventive ways people found to get around it? In this homage to Ben Franklin's first uh, American editorial cartoon, instead of a segmented snake, it's the different energy sources that if we can join them all together, we can uh, keep us America energy and independent. So all these cartoons make valid points on important issues, but when it comes to influencing opinion, I don't think national and international cartoons can do it. I mean, do you think anything I say about President Trump's going to make him stop and say, wow, I was wrong. I really need to change my ways. I don't think so. So where I can make a difference, where my cartoons can inform and persuade and hopefully reshape public opinion is on the local level. Ideas like Governor McMaster's reluctance to issue a statewide mask mandate. On the bright side, he's finally wearing a mask. <laughs> or our farmer governor's penchant for hiking. Who knew? Who knew the Appalachian Trail went all the way to Argentina? <laughs> Our state security blanket, apologies to peanuts. Here's the feminization of the Citadel. And the discovery of the Hunley and an early real x -Strom bumper sticker. So obviously there are many different issues to comment on in South Carolina, but the uh, one topic that I keep coming back to because I care deeply about it is conserving our beautiful but fragile natural environment. So here's some of my favorites. 
Oops, I'm afraid I went the wrong way, didn't I? The landfill state. Not really hyperbole when you see all the uh, out-of-state garbage that's coming into the state of South Carolina. And South Carolina is likened to a green box here for all the low-level radioactive waste that we've received over the years. And you can see it's overflowing. This is on Bay Point Island that was recently in the news. Developers want to build a luxury eco resort here and they promise it'll be green. Right, green is in green backs. Fortunately, the uh, Buford Zoning Commission decided, or the board decided against allowing this to go forward. Now the backstory to this cartoon idea, well, it wasn't my cartoon that did it. There's so many, many voices, Skelts, the governors, uh, Representative Cunningham, uh, and the Gullah Geechee uh, people uh, in the Sea Island areas, they all came out against this. And so it's fortunate we're able to solve and save uh, this, uh, this environment for uh, birds and turtles. But the backstory here, when I did this, I wanted, I was afraid I wasn't gonna get it out in time. So I did this as an editorial cartoon. But I have a new uh, comic strip that's running once a week in the Charleston City paper called Low Country. And this was my original uh, uh, pitch for that cartoon strip. Well, we started three weeks ago and this version of Low Country ran just this past Wednesday before the Thursday ruling by the, uh, the zoning board. So I was happy it got out there. Well, it's the same message as the other, but he says, developers want to build a luxury eco resort here and they promise it'll be green. Right, green is in green back. So it's the same message. I did it in three panels instead of two. But the, originally, like I said, this was meant to be the uh, low country strip idea. Here's another one that I've done on low country. We're almost home. These are the two turtles <laughs> swimming through the water. How do you know? Do you navigate by the stars? No, the pollution. Unfortunately, that's too true. Here's a look at coastal South Carolina development since Hurricane Hugo. I'm afraid that the next Hugo-like storm that hits South Carolina's coast is going to knock down all this new construction like so many dominoes. We've just really overbuilt the coast. And turtles know instinctively that if you build your nest too close to the ocean, it'll be washed away. Maybe someone should tell them, the turtle says. <laughs> I think that I shall never see another tree with the DOT. For all of you who've traveled down I-26 to Charleston, the beautiful corridor before you reach Charleston is gone now. Uh, the, I mean, I understand the issue, cars going off the roadway and hitting the trees and people were, were getting killed, but couldn't they just put one of those barriers on each side of the median and they wouldn't have had to cut down all the trees. It just didn't make sense to me. South Carolina is the plutonium state. And as long as we have 12 tons of plutonium at SRS, we'll still be called that. Uh, fortunately, there's been some movement on that front and the federal government is now uh, says they're going to start taking the plutonium out of our state, but we'll see. If Georgia's the peach state, what does that make us? The pits? And this is about the SRS being the future home of the plutonium pit factory. And I really don't know, I haven't been up on the issue enough to know if now that the plutonium is supposed to be going out, is, is this pit factory still gonna happen? I don't know that. The poisonous plants of South Carolina, the yellow jasmine, the nightshade plant, the oleander, and the bomb plant. More coastal residents spout off against oil exploration. Stop seismic testing, particularly for marine mammals like the northern right whale pictured here. Uh, their calving grounds are off in our waters uh, off of South Carolina. And 
seismic testing will just drive them away. They're already endangered, so Lord knows that would be the end of them, I'm afraid. So it's really good right now that there's, a, there's been a halt to it, although Trump's promise to halt oil exploration in Florida and South Carolina, uh, it, I think it's just a campaign ploy to win votes in Florida right now. Same issue, different meme. Here the voice of the ocean is telling us to stop seismic testing. And the turtle being attacked by the plastic bags. Actually, it's the other way around. Uh, when the turtle eats the plastic bags floating in the water, they think it's the, their favorite food source, the jellyfish. And of course, once they ingest it, that's the end of the poor turtle. So I'm so happy that uh, many of the coastal and now uh, other cities within South Carolina are banning the use of these uh, plastic one-time use bags. Thank you. This is Mr. Potato Farm slurping all the water out of the South Fork of the Edisto. Hopefully uh, these mega farms will not deplete all of the water there. And Denmark, South Carolina has a drinking water problem. Before the presidential candidates took notice, it looked like this. And afterwards, you see the result. Everybody had something to say about it, but the Denmark water situation hasn't changed, I don't think. Santee Cooper wants to give up coal-fired plants, so I say here, here, that's a good thing, particularly for our uh, water in South Carolina. The, the, the pollution, the, uh, the acid rain and the mercury pollution from coal-fired plants is just horrible, so it's a good thing we can hopefully transition from that and more, find more cleaner uses. Welcome to South Carolina. You've got high-level nuclear waste, low-level nuclear waste plume, bankrupt toxic waste landfill on shores of a major aquifer, and out-of-state waste dumps. Let's just drive on through to Florida this year. And not only is Debbie Dew a, uh, a gated community, it's seawall, too. We need to find a poorer beach. <laughs> I think it's time they started testing for bacteria. You know, up in Myrtle Beach, they let the rainwater runoff go into these, look like wading pools on the beach and the children love to get in them. And of course, it's just full of bacteria, it's filthy. I don't, I don't know what they're gonna do to solve that problem. They should have never have let it dump out under the beaches for, in the first place. And here I'm borrowing from Dr. Seuss. The Lorax says, I speak for the dunes. In this case, the Ingram dunes, the ancient dune formation, right downtown Myrtle Beach. And they wanted to develop it a year or so ago. And fortunately, I think uh, they stopped that development. There it is again, hear it? Tick, tick, tick. That's the ticking time bomb of the Pinewood, South Carolina toxic waste dump just feet from the shores of Lake Marion. Remember when this was just a toxic waste dump? Now DHEC has to dump millions of South Carolina taxpayers' money to just maintain the site since the former owner went bankrupt and didn't leave enough money in the, in the uh, cleanup fund to maintain it or to keep it from leaking. So now we spend millions just to keep it where it is. What's the number one problem with offshore drilling in South Carolina? It's onshore drilling. If we ever have offshore drilling here and we have a leak like happened in the Gulf of Mexico, tourism will be killed here. And tourism is what really runs the coastal area of South Carolina. If we lose that, the, the amount of money is far greater in tourism dollars than we would ever realize in oil exploration. So it's really a no-brainer. Birds that can be harmed by offshore drilling in South Carolina. Sandpiper, heron, 
brown pelican and the goose that laid the golden egg, again, tourism. And to borrow from Pogo, once again, we've met the enemy and he is us. The Congaree National Park is just downstream from Columbia and all the sewage and chemical runoff that runs into the river goes right down to the Congaree National Park. So, and every, every year or so, there's another sewage spill by one of the plants on the Saluda River. It's just terrible. And finally, Plastic pollution is, in my uh, idea, is, is one of the worst things that's happening throughout the world in, in the waters. And one day it's gonna affect us as well if we don't get our head, or head and hands around it. So I hope that one day we can find a way to stop all this plastic getting into our waterways. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Robert, for your powerful words and images. During these unprecedented and, unprecedented and challenging times, we are all trying to navigate a new normal, um, trying to stay, find ways to stay safe and um, healthy while still maintaining social distance and um, still connecting with others. And uh, <clears throat> for that reason, I'm really glad that we're here tonight and able um, to make some connections safely. Um, I, I don't know about y'all, but I have been constantly questioning how, what, what is safe and how, um, what are the right decisions and the wrong decisions. Um, and so it's been really challenging um, for me and for all of us, as we, um, as we really are all facing fatigue and frustration and anxiety uh, associated with COVID. And I think one, it's gonna be with us for a while though. And so um, we are all having to adapt. And for that reason, as we began to plan Wildside and envision what it might look like this year, we knew that we were gonna have to be flexible and adapt. And I'm really proud of our team. Um, I think that they have been very adept at planning this event and keeping us all safe. So I'm thankful for, for that. And one of the things that I really, one of the reasons I really was looking forward to Wildside is because I knew one of the outcomes from tonight was to be inspired and motivated by being with you all um, who share our passion um, for the protection of the South, South Carolina's environment. I'm just hearing some of the people's cheers and comments as Robert really talked about the environmental threats facing our state, just um, it, it arose a sense of you know, kindredness and um, a sense of being together with people who really share uh, the passion for protecting what's important um, about South Carolina. And, and I think that sharing that um, respect and passion and appreciation for our natural world um, is really important because it's our collective reverence for our beaches, our mountains, our rivers, our streams, um, really that, that unite us and 
um, and it's essential for the protection of those resources. Um, my, my reverence for the natural environment really um, has just grown and deepened over time. And it started, um, it, it really ramped up when I was working with Jimmy Chandler, Skelt's founder. Um, he instilled in me values that I, I still carry with me today. And, and really that, that it takes persistence and dogged determination, um, even in the face of the greatest adversity, if you're gonna fight for anything that's worth fighting for. And we, <laughs> and we have a lot worth fighting for in South Carolina. <laughs> I mean, even just looking around tonight and looking up at these beautiful live oaks and recognizing that they provide they provide shelter and shade. Um, they sequester carbon, they produce oxygen, they absorb floodwaters when it rains. They really provide so much that benefits us as humans. And to quote Wendell Berry, the one thing all of us have in common is that we need this earth. So <laughs> um, it's, it, it doesn't matter what our background is, what our religion is, our ethnicity, our race, our gender, we all rely on a clean and healthy environment for our own physical health and really for our mental health these days because I don't know about y'all but going outside and being in the outdoors is one of the things that I, we can all still do um, safely. And so it's, it's really, um, a call for me to stand up and protect this planet, for us all to unite against the threats that, that are facing it. Um, and I hope that you all feel that shared sense of passion and inspiration and motivation to unite around protecting um, our, our state and our environment. Um, you know, even because even in, you know, even as the threat of COVID presses down on us, the threats to our environment are, are pressing down on us as well. Um, it's the, there, we have seen um, an alarming rate of um, development proposals that would destroy the environment. We're seeing an alarming rate of environmental rollbacks. Um, even, you know, just this year, we're facing all kinds of threats that include uh, filling in floodplain wetlands for development, uh, polluting our waterways, destroying natural habitats, um, like Bay Point that Robert talked about. Um, and those, those threats are, um, they're, they're gr growing and continuing. And so even though COVID has curtailed a lot of day-to-day -day activities, these unwise and develop, uh, unwise um, and environmentally destructive projects are still, are, didn't make the cut. They are still being proposed. And I gotta tell y'all, the people that are out to pollute and destroy the environment, they aren't working from home. And so our legal team has to step up and, and meet them and continue to fight for the protection of our natural resources. And just to even give you an idea, I've, I've talked to a couple of lawyers that have said, they are also really busy. And at Skelt, we've been really busy. We just in the past two months have paid $2,000 just in filing fees to maintain or initiate our existing caseload because the courts are keeping us that, that busy. Um, specifically, our, our legal team filed a challenge against a project that would fill in and dredge up over 200 acres of wetlands in the West Ashley part of Charleston in an area that has historically flooded because there's been fill and build development and so many houses in that area that the government has had to buy them out because they've repeated, repeatedly flooded. And yet our state Department of Health and Environmental Control issued permits to allow a massive 3000 um, acre development on, on property that's in a floodplain. So we're, we are now, we had, we just filed that case um, recently. Um, we're also, uh, we've got a strategic series of cases that's designed to protect the up, upstate rural landscapes. Um, Greenville County's rural lands are under threat of um, encroachment from suburban sprawl. 
And so we're working with a coalition of um, groups that are, are trying to strengthen protections for rural lands. Um, we also, we talked a little bit about some of the, Robert talked a little bit about some of the coal fire plants and um, we filed a case against DHAC, the Department of Health and Environmental Control, because, uh, because there are three coal-fired power plants in South Carolina, the Watery, Winya here in Georgetown and Cross, and those coal-fired power plants have been operating with permits that have been expired between 10 and 12 years. And so these expired permits, of course, have less stringent uh, pollution controls on them. And so our power plants have been just spewing out more pollution and DHEC has sat, sat by and done nothing until we filed our lawsuit. And uh, as any uh, lawyers in the group know, it, it's very rare that a defendant in a lawsuit calls you up and basically acknowledges guilt right after you file your lawsuit. But that's actually what happened with us. <laughs> So good work to our team, Leslie and Ben, that filed that case against DHEC, and, and now DHEC is, is agreeing um, that they are going to act on those old expired permits before the end of the year. Um, so, and while regulators are busy approving permits, um, court doors are, are open and our legal team has the drive, the expertise, and the determination to protect, fight for protection of our, our resources. Uh, last month, Ben and Leslie were in trial in Columbia, a three-day trial over uh, fighting over a growing field, which are erosion control structures on Debidu Beach, the beach that Robert talked about that's already got a seawall. and. Um, as, as I think the, the turtles say the story very well, um, even the turtles are feeling excluded from the beach because of these erosion control structures. So uh, we were in court fighting for protection of, of our public beaches. Um, and um, um, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm losing my train of thought just a little bit here. Um, so we've got um, a team that is in, in court fighting constantly, but we also realize that there is the need to um, fight outside of the courtroom. Um, and we do that whenever we can to avoid litigation. Uh, I think one really great example is our efforts on Bay Point, which Robert talked about. It's a 400 acre barrier island in the middle of Port Royal Sound in Beaufort County. And it is only accessible by boat or jet or, or helicopter. And it's, it's an important bird area under Audubon um, designation. It's also an important um, fishing and cultural area for the Gullah Geechee Nation. And it would be, it was threatened by this eco luxury resort um, and that, that wouldn't benefit any of the people that actually live in the area. And so we worked with um, a, a broad group of, of um, organizations and individuals. We were able to gain the support of Governor McMaster and some legislators um, who opposed the, the Bay Point development. And um, our team, Leslie was down in, in Beaufort, testified at the Zoning Board of Appeals on third just on Thursday night Robert um, stole the thunder a little bit because he already told you that the um, project was denied and which is really really great news so this luxury resort that was going to just completely change Bay Point is, yeah, is thwarted for now um, it, and so we while we are very thrilled that we've got a solid decision, we know that the threat's not over. Because what we've seen time and time again is that when there are millions at stake with the development of this type, that, that they just don't go easy. And so we are, um, we are, are committed to continuing that fight. Um, we also have had to double down on our efforts at the, the State House. 
we've um, this year especially we made that decision as an organization because after you know, after many years of seeing environmental rollbacks many times because we would win a, a, a president setting case in in our appellate courts and then have the legislature take that away um, legislatively uh, we realized that we when we're in the courtroom we um, we're able to match our deep pocketed opponents with savvy and skill and expertise in the courtroom. But when it came to the state house, we were being outgunned and we really needed to level the playing field. And so we've been working to have a voice and relationships with legislators that's helped us with, with um, so far with Bay Point. It's also helping, we're using those relationships in our efforts also to stop seismic testing and offshore drilling. Um, and so we are using all angles to, to um, make sure that we're doing what we can and using our legal expertise to protect um, the natural environment of South Carolina. So whether you're here in person or not, uh, your support means a lot in these unprecedented times. The development pressures are accelerating and many of us have seen how they've accelerated around us in these past months. Uh, we must sit, stay vigilant though and with your support and your inspiration and your friendship we will. And as I um, transition into um, the, the end of my uh, remarks, um, I want to first and foremost give special thanks to some longtime supporters of ours, Michael and Jenny Prevost. Um, they're longtime Georgetonians. They've been supporting Scalp for 30 years, and they've also included Scalp in their estate planning. And how did I find out about that? Well, they they told me that they had included us and. So we um, this year are making a, a, a deliberate and concerted effort to focus on um, our legacy giving program um, to more intentionally build the legacy of protecting South Carolina's uh, natural environment uh, for future generations. Um, and we're excited that we've got a quarter of our board joining us uh, as these legacy donors. Uh, Bill Holt and Lisa Allen and Su Susan Hilfer. Um, so to all of our legacy supporters, thank you. And thank you particularly on behalf of future generations and future scalpers. Um, so the, there are going to be more details about uh, our co-founder circle and that's going to be open to anybody who includes scalp in their will, in their estate planning, in in 2020 and we're going to have um, more details announced uh, later in the year about the benefits of being um, in that co-founder circle so look out for that but i don't you don't have to start writing a will right now um, to be clear uh, tonight a check or a text would do just fine because we have um, a matching challenge this year uh, last year we also had a matching challenge and we had a big crowd and you all knocked it out of the park. Um, this year, we have a smaller crowd, but we're hoping that you will still help us meet th that every dollar of the match. And so we have two generous donors that agreed to uh, match dollar for dollar up to $5,000 tonight. So um, how can you do that, you ask? Well, if you're a bidder, you can just click uh, donate on the, um, the bidding website. Uh, you can text give and the amount um, to the, the um, Qtego website number that you've got on your phones. Um, if you're not a bidder, you prefer not to use those methods, you can always go to our website, www.skelp.org and click the donate button, or you can just use the good old fashioned and recycled envelopes from last year. Um, so I um, know that we ask a lot of our, our supporters, and I know that right now it might not be possible for some of you to support Scalp in that way, but I want you to know that no amount is too small, also no amount is too large, 
<laughs> and that your support goes directly to helping us pay the bills and, and to help um, our, keep our A team of lawyers um, working and fighting for you every day. And I want to take just a, a, a brief minute, like as my very last remarks, just to introduce um, the, the Scalp legal team. I, I, I've talked, mentioned a few of their names, and they're working really hard every day to protect what we all love about South Carolina. So if y'all would maybe come up to the stage so that uh, our virtual audience can see you all. Um, I'm going to start with Michael Corley because um, I've He's worked with Scalp the longest, and Michael Michael landed on Scalp's doorstep uh, as a summer law student, and he immediately endeared himself to Jimmy and I because he was a very um, persuasive writer and also just a very um, good-natured, easygoing guy. And over time, he has become an integral part of the Scalp team and a really skilled, skilled lawyer. So, Michael, oh, there's the <laughs> um, Leslie Lenhart, I've actually known longer than anyone um, here except for my family. <laughs> and uh, Leslie and I got to know each other in law school and she was she worked for DHEC's Office of Ocean and Coastal Resource Management and was their um, chief counsel there for a number of years before transitioning into private practice. And when she was in private practice, Leslie and I were on the opposite side of the courtrooms quite frequently. Um, but we would always get together for a glass of wine and often talk about how great it would be if she could one day work with Scalp. And I'm thrilled to say that it's been two years of working with Leslie at Scalp, and I can't put it be happier to have her. And it's her birthday! Thirty-seven years old. <laughs> and um, Ben Cunningham, I he I can't tell you how fortunate we are to have him. Um, I had never met Ben until I interviewed him, but it was apparent um, as soon as I met him that he had, he was exactly what Skelt needed. He is a skilled and competent litigator. He, and it wasn't until he, he started actually working with Skelt that we actually also realized that he's a very, very witty guy. And so it's, <laughs> always helpful when you're in the throes of litigation to have somebody that's going to give you a good laugh and we appreciate them for that and also with lauren we we got really really fortunate um she she joined us a year ago um, thanks to the support of of justin lucy um, who donated her to us for a year, and then we realized what a badass lawyer she was. <laughs> and that Lauren is so determined, she will uncover every single piece of evidence and uncover every stone that needs to be uncovered to make sure that she brings a really solid legal case. And so we're really glad to have her as part of the team too. And um, appreciate all the great work y'all do for the state of South Carolina. And y'all, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. And um, please enjoy the rest of the evening. We've got more music, more drinks, um, and more fellowship. So thank y'all so much. I forgot what I was trying to have that on now. <laughs>